Hello loves, so I actually just got back from a night out. I literally came through the door, running like a track star, uh, ripped my wig off, took my lashes off, took the babies outside, and then I just felt compelled to share some thoughts because it's kind of a joke that I make um, on my platform. But like, it's also not really a joke. If you know me in real life, it's not a joke at all, but I don't leave my house, okay? Um, in the past, I used to actually struggle with agoraphobia. And so this is not really something new, a new fact about me, um, not leaving my house. I just, I'm a very anxious person. I'm very, very just kind of um, nervous, I think is actually a really good word to use there. The most, the most amount of anxiety you can have, um, the most amount of nervousness, nervousness you can have, being around people and feeling perceived, that is me. Despite all of that, I have left my house and I actually went to karaoke night and this was big. This was huge for me because usually if I'm going to go out, I usually have a person that I know very, very well, knows me very well. So then if I need to vacate the area quickly, that person can help me get out. If I need to, you know, just feel like I have almost like a security blanket. That person's like a security blanket for me, right? And this time I did not have that. Uh, I had no security blanket. I also went in not knowing what to expect because the place that I go to karaoke is usually jam-packed. And I also haven't left my house, especially in a social, a social capacity, in well over four or five months. Um, and I know that sounds like, well, how is that possible? But like, you'd be surprised at how well you could stay in your house and be a hermit. Um, people do it, and I'm one of those people that do it. I literally only leave my house to go grocery shopping, and then I immediately come back home. And then that's it. If I would need any social interaction, most of the time I get it from my family. Um, I call them up and I talk to them. So me leaving my house and going out and doing this karaoke thing was so much, I cannot stress to you just how healing, how cathartic, how great it felt in my soul. I needed to get out. There is just every part of me, I love people. That's it, don't get it twisted. Like despite everything, that all the anxiety and nerves that I have, I love people and I love going out and I love being in a nightclub environment. Don't love drinking. I actually did this whole thing sober. Um, I don't love drinking. I don't love really dealing with drunk people, but I do love the night scene. Like, honestly, my favorite scene is a nightclub where the lights are low. You got the, uh, the 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 you got the colored lights going and everybody's just that is literally my like dream environment <laughs> okay <laughs> which i know that sounds like nightmare fuel people i think people try to like sound cool and they're like i'm too old for the club i am not too old okay i am saying it i'm in my 30s and i'm a big advocate for the club i need to be in the club okay <laughs> and but i don't leave my house enough to go to the club and i went to the karaoke bar which is not a club but i went to the karaoke bar and i had so much fun it was so nice because i never know you know part of my anxiety is i never know going into something what to expect I never know how people are going to treat me and I never know what the expectations are for me. It really kind of freaked me out. I think when my video started to go viral on top of just like kind of the reputation of being a good singer and I, I know this is going to be such a weird thing. But I think all of that made singing for me this like thing I had to be good at and like it took the enjoyment, the soul, the fun out of it for me. And I think in my time of hermiting, I spent so much time with me, okay? I think before I would almost, I was lonely and I would almost try to find ways to escape that. I always just wanted to fill the void. But now I've gotten so comfortable with my loneliness and I've gotten so comfortable with 
even not just like my loneliness because I think that there's a difference. It's not that I've gotten more comfortable with my loneliness, I've gotten more comfortable with being alone and being with myself and I feel so much more secure in myself that when I was out there, you couldn't tell me like anything. You could say I was a great singer and, and that's what most people say, but I took it and then I said thank you and then I just put it on the shelf. I didn't internalize it, I didn't make it like a, okay, so now everything I do has to be perfect. Every time I go up there, I gotta give them a crowd-pleasing number. Like, that was gone from my brain, which was new for me. I also felt less pressure to be, like, Anjali, this person that, um, how do I say this? I think because also people know me from the internet, <laughs> A lot of the time, and I'm not saying this like I'm famous, but because I don't leave my house, the only way anybody to, is to get, the only way anybody is ever able to get to know me is from the internet, right? So like, because people only know me from the internet because they never leave my house, there's like an expectation that I am like the person that I am on the internet. And it's not to say I'm not the person that I am on the internet, but there's definitely some elements that like, you're just not gonna get all the nuances of me on the internet because I can't type all my nuances. I can't, you're not seeing me 24 seven. So you're not getting all of my nuances. Like when people say I speak well for somebody that's deaf, I'm like, that's because you're not hearing me 24 seven when I'm dropping articles and I'm speaking cursive and a doll goes out the window, you know, because I'm tired or because I'm comfortable or whatever, you know, like you're not getting all of that on the internet. So I feel like when I see people in person, I oftentimes feel like I have to hold up Anjali the persona, Anjali the version that is presented on the internet when really who I am in real life, like who I am when I'm by myself, is just kind of like a really, really tall bundle of nerves. <laughs> I am somebody who is just wanting to give love and care but also is not quite sure all the time how to do that in the best capacity you know like that's who i am in real life and i got to be me tonight because i think i'm just like i said i, I spent so much time with myself that like it's almost you can't really take me out of this all i've had for all this time was just me and and it was so nice to feel like people got to see me. I got to reconnect to people I haven't gotten to talk to in, in quite some time. And and they were, I think, not even think, they would talk to me and, and they would tell me that they can just see, you know, the groundedness that exists in me now. And, and you know, even though I still have that quirkiness of nerves and you can still see the quirky elements of myself, it's like I'm now grounded and comfortable in my quirkiness. And and I just feel really, really good having had gone out, you know? I feel really like, like I'm like stepping in and I'm like, this is me, take it or leave it. And I think this is the first time in a really long time that I haven't needed a security blanket. I didn't need, you know, um, somebody that could help me get out, I could get out, I could have left at any point if I wanted to, and I stayed. And I also didn't need an escape, you know, like alcohol, I think it's so common for us to use alcohol to shatter, you know, some of our defenses, some of our walls, but I didn't need that. There was a moment walking in at first where I was like, I think I need this, but I stopped myself, and I immediately had, you know, my cranberry soda water, and and I felt good the whole night, you know? I got up on stage and I sang, and I think it's been a very long time since I've sang sober. <laughs> it's been a very long time since I've been on stage, period, because obviously, like I said, I haven't been leaving my house. But then it's a very long time since I've sang on stage, and then it's a very long time since I've sang on stage sober. And to be honest, it was so much fun because I think because I have uh, removed the expectation that I have to be good, at what I'm doing, I was able to just kind of have fun. I don't think I was fully able to have the fun that I wanted to have, but I did feel, you know, at some point I started dancing a little bit, which, you know, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm the best dancer, but also, you know, actually I'm not gonna talk down on myself like that. Like, I think I could dance pretty well. 
I think I got a pretty sensual dance repertoire in me, um, but I felt myself feeling, you know, like, oh, I don't know this part, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna dance instead, and I'm just gonna be cute, and it's gonna be fun, and it's gonna be fine, because life is just not that serious. Life is just a bunch of silly, stupid things compiled together, and all we're really supposed to be doing is having a great time. And I know, you know, with current events and stuff, that seems like a very toned up thing to say. And I acknowledge where we are at this point in history. But in general, life is just supposed to be silly, goofy, fun. And I felt like I was having a silly, goofy, fun time up on stage, um, even when things weren't perfect. Wherever you are in your journey, I promise you, there is another side. There is a better, there is a future waiting for you. You know, so much of my existence has been um, hinged on this idea that like, I don't know what's gonna be on the other side and I don't know if I can make it on the other side without, you know, my vices, without my security blankets, without, you know, these facets of me that I don't really like, but they're just permanent parts of me. But the truth is there is a life outside of all of that. And there is a life that can come after all of that. And I got to live a lot of that life today. Not a lot, but I got to feel like I was living that life today. And, you know, I think time, you know, and I am, I'm 30, you know, I'll be 31 next month. So I think, you know, just age and time, um, is a part of that just you know get into my don't give a fuck era um but i also think just healing and and being more comfortable with you you know like i said i i used to feel like i couldn't be alone and i always felt like i needed to call somebody up to come hang out with me or to talk to me or to keep me company and i couldn't do anything alone and i can't I can do this alone. So now anything and anybody and any experience that comes into my life is because I am allowing it to. You know, I want it to. It's it's lucky to be here. Um, but me, I am non-negotiable. I am 100% non-negotiable. So, and I don't need to compromise on myself, you know? I don't need to hide myself away. I don't need to tuck away my differences. I don't need to, you know, I, I just, I'm having a lot of epiphanies about identity and stuff like that. So, you know, this is just kind of my play, but I hope that you're having a great day or a great night whenever you happen to be watching this. For me, it's literally midnight. And so, oh my God, it's almost one. I gotta wash my face. I gotta take a shower. I gotta drink some water because I could tell I'm dehydrated from running around and singing my silly little karaoke song. But hopefully this will be my first outing of many. I had dreams. I wanted to be able to come out. By the end of the year, I want to be able to say I have friends. I really want to bring in the new year with friends. You know, I really want next year. I'm not going to be able, I'm probably not going to be able to get it this year, but I really have always wanted a surprise birthday party. And next year, I'm feeling pretty confident that if this is the way that I'm going next year, I'm going to get a surprise birthday party and it is going to be amazing. And I'm going to feel like the most luckiest girl in the world. You know, um, I already do a lot of the time. So, I'm standing the car with my makeup on. I'm going to watch this shit on her. Okay, I will talk to you all soon and uh, yeah, goodbye.